Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our daily devotional. Uh, thank you, God, for this uh, beautiful, sunshiny day. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Um, just, just remind you, our daily devotional is being uh, recorded and, and it will be uploaded later on to our uh, Grosvenor Church Barnes YouTube channel. Okay, you can recommend the daily devotional for your friends, for people, anyone else. Okay, maybe God bless you this morning and, uh, and speak to your heart. Thank you very much for always getting connected with us. So if you miss any part of this service, you can go later on to our, our YouTube page. I mean, just repeating because uh, maybe some people, they miss the daily devotional in the morning. It's like today is a beautiful day. Maybe some people going out for walking, but when it, when you come back home, you can watch it. And uh, yeah, so anytime, I'm sure God be uh, bless you. This morning we have Dick Shannings sharing God's word with us, and Jigger Gilbert sharing a beautiful, amazing worship song. I hope God bless you uh, through. Uh, those brothers. So let's let's just pray, asking God to speak to our hearts. Lord, thank you very much for this beautiful day. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. Thank you for the salvation. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Lord, we just surrender this uh, daily devotional to your hands. We pray for Dick Shamis. We pray for his message. We pray, ask you, Lord, to speak to our hearts. So these people who are connected, they are here because they want to grow spiritually. They want to learn from you. So Holy Spirit, teach us this morning through our brother Dick. Also, I pray for this amazing song, Speak to Our Hearts. This is my prayer in Jesus' name for your glory. Amen. Hello, everybody. I was thinking the other day of how much richer is our English language because we have the English Bible. They reckon that there are at least 80 expressions in daily use that come straight from Scripture. Things like, for example, the blind leading the blind, by the skin of your teeth, eat, drink and be merry, to fall by the wayside, to have feet of clay, a fly in the ointment, a drop in the bucket, to move mountains, sour grapes, many more. But the one that I'm thinking of right now is the one which has to do with being at our wit's end. It comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 107. Some went down to the sea in ships, they saw the work of the Lord, the wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. And what did the people do? They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits end. To be so worried, to be so confused, to be so angry maybe, that they don't know what to do next. And what do you do? What do I do when we're at wits end? Well... If you're like King David, you will probably sing about it. Let me read one of David's psalms, Psalm number 3. A psalm of David when he fled from Absalom his son. O Lord, how many are my foes! Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul there is no salvation for him. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord, your blessing be on your people. Don't you love the way the psalmist, I don't mince words, smash their jaw, Lord. Wits end. It's so real that people have actually given it a location. They call it, they call it Wits End Corner. It's the place where doubts are hatched, where certainties become blurred. It's the place where hopes are dashed, where fears are fueled, where we lose sleep, where we take fright. And when we're in that place, that place of trouble, confusion, what do we do? What did David do? 
Well, point number one, he, he faced the circumstances. He was real about his condition. Oh Lord, I have so many enemies, so many are against me, so many are saying God will never rescue him. What were David's circumstances? Well, it's hinted in the beginning of the psalm. It was a psalm that he wrote when he was running away from his son Absalom. You remember that Absalom's son, Absalom, ran away himself and led a rebellion. And a messenger came to David saying, the hearts of the men of Israel have gone after Absalom. So David leaves his palace and runs. And funnily enough, one of the first people he encounters on his journey was a man called Shimei, who was from King Saul's family. And he came out and started throwing stones at David and called him a murderer. But what did David do? What should we do when things are so bleak? I mean, we may not be chased by a greedy, bloodthirsty son, but it might have something to do with our family. It might be to do with our past failure. It might be to do with our past sin. It might be to do with our health, our job, our finances, or other circumstances. The first thing is to remind yourself, to remind ourselves of what we know about God. David calls him Lord, the self-existent one, the one who wants to come and reveal himself. This is the God who has come down. If you like, the great I am of the burning bush, the God who is not distant, but nearby. And he's come down. And of course, you and I know that he's come down in the person of his son. Charles Wesley wrote, glory be to God on high and peace on earth descend. God comes down, he bows the sky, he shows himself our friend. God the invisible appears, God the blessed, the great I am, sojourns in this veil of tears, and Jesus is his name. Emptied of his majesty, of his dazzling glories shorn, being source begins to be, and God himself is born. Aren't they wonderful words? Then David and we, of course, can remember that this God is also our shield, our protector, our defender, our safe place. In calling God his shield, he was simply telling God, I, I know that I've got lots of enemies. They've risen up against me. And when I have enemies, I need some sort of some sort of defense. I'm in a terrible situation. I know my back is against the wall. But in spite of all this, you are my shield. You are my protection. You are my defense. You are my safety. The New Testament has an interesting phrase to describe this position of total, total tranquility, safety and certainty. It's the expression in Christ and it crops up in Paul's letters over and over again. Therefore, there is no condemnation, for example, for those who are in Christ. To be in Christ means that we now have everything we could possibly need in order to live a life that's pleasing to God. In Christ means that the focus of all our thoughts and our actions are going to be his. In Christ means that he will always be Lord. In Christ means that we are safe. In Christ means that we recognise that there's no place we would rather be. But then David says, he's my glory. Or if you like, he's my boast. David, I guess, could have boasted about quite a lot. Uh, he could have said, well, I've had a good life. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm a poet of some worth. Uh, I'm, I was a good shepherd, quite musical, a, a good soldier, an effective king, a proud father. And I loved all my seven or eight wives. But he didn't say any of that. He said, the Lord is my glory. The Lord is my boast. The Apostle Paul said much the same thing. God forbid that I should glory. God forbid that I should boast, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then David goes on and remembers that the Lord is the lifter of his head. He's the one who comes to David and says, David, chin up. You can often tell a person's mood by the position of their head. And um, if you're in Whitsand Corner, the likelihood is that your head is drooping. But um, lifting up our heads means that we won't bow down in shame. We won't bow down in defeat or despair. David says, you see, everybody's mocking him. Everybody's against him. Some are actual enemies. And they tell him that God has done a runner. But if you ever came to see me, David would say, 
he would find that my head is held high. And only our loving, caring, encouraging Heavenly Father can do that. He's our Lord, he's our protector, he's the boast, our glory, he's the lifter of our head. What more could we want, even at Wits End Corner? But there is more. He is the God who listens and answers. David said, I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. And look at the outcome. Remember what would normally happen to us at Wits End Corner? We would have sleepless nights and frantic fear. Sleep comes, says David. I lay down and slept. One of the blessings of the believer this is. You remember in Acts chapter 12, Peter is in prison, probably expecting to be executed the following day. And an angel comes to let him loose and uh, he has to shake him. He has to really push him in order to wake him up. How about that? In 1555, the Anglican bishops, Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Ridley, were sentenced to be burned at the stake. And Ridley's brother visited him the day before the execution and offered to stay with him overnight. And Ridley said, no, no, you shall not, for I intend to go to bed and to sleep as quietly as I ever did. And um, sleep comes and fear goes. I will not fear tens of thousands who assail me on every side, says David. And what, what happened? Did the circumstances change? No, David is still on the run. But a consideration of the character of God taught David to trust. He's Lord, he's protector, he's glory, lifter of a head. He hears and answers prayer. And all that can be yours and mine today. A blessing from Paul's letter to Thessalonica. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word. Bye-bye. God bless you. And I fell in love with this world when my own way just in me I made a plan on my own trying to hide away from the light Before you created the stars you knew me by name counting by you had a plan from the start to turn me around within my heart. Your love is chasing after me. Your cross will bring me home. Your mercy made a way for me. Your cross will bring me home. Jesus, you died for me, giving me everything. Forever I'll live, forever I'll sing, only for me. Jesus, you called my name, giving me life. Now I'm a child of the King, righteous restored, risen in Him. Chosen to stand in His grace, chains all undone, abandoned in prayer. Oh, your love is chasing after me, your cross will bring Your mercy made a way for me. Your 
your cross will bring me home Jesus you died for me giving me everything forever I'll live forever I'll sing only for you Jesus you call my name giving me life again forever I'll live forever I'll sing only for you Jesus you die for me giving me everything forever I'll live forever I'll sing only for you Jesus you call my name giving me life forever I'll live forever I'll sing Bled and you died, you gave up your life and thought of me. With love in your eyes, you gave up your life to set me free. You bled and you died, you gave up your life. Love in your eyes, you gave up your life to set me free. Jesus, you died for me, giving me everything. Forever I'll live, forever I'll sing, only for me. Jesus, you called my name, giving me life again. Forever I'll live, forever I'll sing, only for you. Only for you. Wow, thank you very much, Jeek Shamis, again for your encouraging message. Jeek always has been with us every week, sharing words from his heart. We are very uh, pleased on having Jeek here with us every week. So also, Jigger, thank you very much for this amazing, beautiful song. And uh, yes, I hope you, you have a, a nice and blessed day. Hope to see you tomorrow morning. Hapa Stan here, Grosvenor Church Barnesville Facebook page. God bless you. Have a nice day. Bye.